joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Efeni. Good morning, Emmanuel. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning, Rufai. Good morning, Ojinika Okwe. Jinix! <laughs> yes, I'm here. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Yes. Efeni. Now, let's start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. The lead story, Sonwolu Abiodun Abdul Razak Sule Inua Machawale Others secure APC ticket as protests greet out outcome of gubernatorial primaries in some states. Yes, the APC had its turn yesterday. And of course, expectedly, the incumbents all picked their ticket. But the manner of some of those victories, well, it just led to some court cases in the near future. Now, you look at that list, almost all, yes, all the sitting governors uh, picked their ticket almost very easily. It's, you, you have to go back in time to see when a sitting governor was actually denied a ticket and became an observer in the next election. Yes, Gordon Obaseki, the Adams Oshomole led, yes, Adams Oshomole himself, who was playing George Jury and... Uh, even an appeal court was <laughs> uh, successfully denied um, Godwin Obaseki the APC ticket. But, uh, of course, Obaseki not want to just take that line low. He made the next move, and today he's a second-term governor. Yes, but history, if we must go back in time, when a sitting governor was actually uh, denied a ticket, you have to go back to the Second Republic. Clement Isong, then governor of Old Cross River State, today's Cross River and Aquaibom State, was denied a ticket by the MPN. Of course, the guys who engineered that denial happens to be a certain Joseph Wyers, who was the Senate president then, way back in time. So, sitting governors having their way, and but in the case of Lagos, I think there's a story to be told there. But let's just look at um, other newspapers quickly. Yes, the Punch newspaper, fresh crisis hits APC. Factions boycott polls, threaten suits. Lagos aspirant protest exclusion. So Wonlu, Abiodun, Omar Gege, Matawale, others win. Abe Ogun, Sokoto aspirants allege fraud, threaten suits. Keyamo Ojugbo, others absent. Yes, in a place like Delta, DSP. Deputy Senate President Ovio Magege easily won that one. And others who were angling for that uh, ticket in Delta under the APC uh, banner obviously were just um, hitting against the rocks. Now, what is going to happen? In the case of Lagos, two aspirants who bought their form only got to know that they were they were not, um, they were screened out, as it were, disqualified on the day of the election. Well, that is something uh, that people would take note of. Now, the Guardian newspaper, 48 hours to APC presidential primary, another shift likely over absence of screening convention committee. Stakeholders decry lull in convention activities, delay strategic says official of Bello campaign group. Buhari departs for U AU summit after meeting with Ushibaju. Fire me. No cause for alarm over consensus candidate. Yes, the situation in APC. Well, if you were Ashibaju Bola Metinubu, Yemi Ushibaju, if you were a Mekan Wajubag Bonaya Onu, and the talk of the president having a preferred candidate he will push at the last minute. Will your heart be palpitating at this point? Am I the one? Am I the chosen one or not? But, well, it's a game in the APC. Who will be the chosen one? Why is this screening being delayed? If you look at the Lagos template, how candidates, aspirants were screened out. Is that a template to be used at the federal level? Who will be screened out? Because as it stands, it's like the screening will just be done a few hours before the convention starts. But 
who continue to watch the APC and its strategic game, according to uh, Yaya Bello, that is strategic. The delay is in screening, is strategic. Now, let's look at um, the Daily Sun newspaper, APC presidential primaries, Lawano, Shibayo, Tinubu, Ono, Ameshi, Omai, look strong, Buhari party elders walk towards consensus. Jonathan condemns party primaries, knocks lawmakers. Now, the Daily Trust newspaper, APC presidential ticket, Buhari meets governor's mom, unpreferred candidate, leaves aspirants, others guessing, off to Malabo for AU summit. No date for screening, 48 hours to primaries. PDP picks candidate tomorrow. Vanguard newspaper, 2023, how PDP governors frustrated will be out of party. Governors tighten grip on delegates ahead of APC, PDP, presidential primaries. APC, most adoption of security report on aspirants. Might share screening. Disqualifies four out of 1,197 hours of rep aspirants. APC decides on zoning after screening presidential aspirants. That's what Adamu Abdullahi the chairman of the party, Abdullah Adamu, the chairman of the party, is saying. Now, the, if we look at uh, the nation newspaper, how Somolu Abiodun Abdul Razak won tickets. The leadership newspaper, Friday leadership, they call to this edition. 811 delegates in moment of decision. How 14 aspirants stand? Yeah, looking at the strengths of the 14 aspirants were aiming to pick the ticket of the PDP. No zoning, the PDP has said. Now, if we just look at uh, the foreign newspapers quickly. Now, Rishi Sunak and his package is hogging the headlines in the British newspapers. Now, the Times of London, Tories split on tax and spending bonanza. Sunak announces 21 Billion euro to help with rising bills. No, 21 billion pounds, that is, to help with rising bills. Now, every household in the country will receive 400 pounds to help cope with the costs of uh, their gas and electricity bills. While another 8 million families will receive a one off. 650 pounds payment. Yes, the money will come from the windfall, the windfall tax on energy, which Richard Sunak had resisted up till now. Now, that windfall tax will rake in five million, five billion pounds into the government coffers. And from there, they will give out this uh, package to help deal with the cost of living uh, each, uh, problem in the UK. Now, the Telegraph newspaper looking at that story, Tories are now the party of big spending. Yes, Chancellor says his party's handouts are more generous than Labour would ever offer. Now, energy companies are not very happy about it. The Financial Times is reporting that soon as £5 billion pounds windfall you turn sparks anger from energy companies. Sector hit by extra 25% levy. Ruben, Rufai, and Genex. Over to you. Let me comment on two things quickly, considering the fact that uh, we have time constraint. The first will be uh, the fact that today is Children's Day, and there's a report on that on page 58 of uh, the This Day newspaper today. And what the paper is reporting at page 58 is the uh, outcome of the Children's Parliament uh, that was held uh, yesterday. And that Children's Parliament highlighted a number of issues. One, the need for parents, you know, uh, to disregard false myths about Western education. This Children's Parliament uh, had in attendance many stakeholders uh, from the northern part of the country. And I guess the major uh, false myth that they will be referring to will be this conception this notion, false notion, uh, that Western education is sinful. The second point that was made also, which I think is important, is the point that governments need to invest more 
in education. And I don't think anybody can argue with that, you know, to uh, prepare for the future, to make the future more competitive for our country. We need to invest more in education and not just any higher education, quality education. The quality is important. There was also concern expressed about the Child Rights Act and the need for, you know, all states of the Federation, those states of the Federation that have not yet domesticated the Child Rights Act to do so, because there are some states that have, you know, refused to do so on the grounds of culture. And the victim of that is the girl child. Uh, over, you know, uh, 18 million children, we're told, are out of school. Most of them are girls. All of these are challenges that would need to be addressed. And the gay bride phenomenon, whereby some people think that uh, they can prolong their lives uh, by marrying, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 young girls, uh, that in itself is... Underage girls, Ruben. Uh, Underage girls, yes. I, I think that's the appropriate phrase. Finally, I'd like to draw attention to this day editorial today at uh, page 34 of the newspaper titled Preparing for the 2022 Flood. The newspaper is uh, relying on the re on the report by the Nigerian uh, Adrological Services Agency, which says that, look, we should all brace up for floods uh, this year in most states. Now, I don't think, you know, that uh, uh, editorial should be disregarded. It should be taken to act by government officials because every year when there is heavy rainfall, you know, we have issues about people dying, buildings collapsing, just because of ordinary rain, rainfall occasioned uh, in a different direction by climate change. And this day, in that editorial, is saying that, look, we can mitigate the impact of climate change so that we don't have the kind of situation we had in uh, 2012, when there was a major flood in the low-lying you know, areas, and there's so many people died. Over 1.2 million people uh, were, were affected. So we should not be victims of changes in weather. We should be prepared. That is the major point in that editorial, and I think it should be amplified. And that's why, if any, I, I brought it up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ifeni. We'll see you next week.